Okay, so here's the setup in order to get my Tweedo PLC in order to talk to the factory I.O. Uh, in order to have this PLC talk to the factory I.O., I need to purchase this USB 4750 from Advantech. Uh, basically, this is a data acquisition module uh, that takes the inputs and output signals from my PLC and sends it to my computer via USB. So there is a cable right here that's mounted in the top of the Advantech right here. Uh, with just a standard connection here and that guy goes to my USB for my computer and transfers all the data from my PLC to my computer. The way to wire this guy up is that all of my, um, my inputs here are going to my outputs of the data acquisition or the 4750. So it's backwards in that my inputs are going to my outputs and my outputs are going to my inputs. Okay, so it's a little bit backwards in the, the wiring of that. Uh, and then with the, uh, the commons and the positive 24 volts DC, let me stop here, let me bring up a diagram, and I'll show you how those guys are wired up as well. Okay, so here's a simplistic diagram of the wiring of just the positive and negative 24 volts DC. So we've already said that the inputs on the PLC go to the outputs of the Advantech, right? So these inputs go to the output terminals. Uh, the output terminals of the PLC go to the input terminals of the Advantech. Now with the wiring of the positive and negative 24 volts DC, I have the positive 24 volts going to the common of my PLC on my inputs. And the negative is going over here and tying into all of the grounds on the outputs of the Advantech. They're also tying into the commons of my PLC on the outputs and on the Input terminals of the Advantech, we're also going to take all the grounds and jumper them together and bring them to the negative of our 24 volt power supply on the PLC. Okay, so it's very simple wiring. Don't try and make it up on your own like I did. Go by the factory IO diagrams that provided in the manual. Put the 24 volts positive to the common of the inputs, and then everything else goes to the negative of the 24 volt DC supply. Okay, so 24 volts positive goes to the common of the inputs, and then everything else ties into the negative here. The negative ties over here to all the grounds on the output side. It ties into the commons on all of your outputs of your PLC, and the negative also goes over and ties into the grounds of all of your inputs on the Advantech 4750. As long as you've got this wiring, then everything should work properly. Once you have all your wiring done, uh, which is already set up in our labs, then what we're going to do is we're going to go into the drivers of the uh, factory I.O. and we're going to look for the Advantech USB 4750. So let's do that now, guys. Okay, so now that we've created this scene and we've wired up our Advantech USB 4750 to our PLC, then the next thing to do is to go to File, and drivers and as long as you have installed um, the software that comes with the Advantech 4750 USB to talk to it um, then once you have that driver installed on your computer it's simply a matter of, uh, of going over to the USB 4750 right so the 4704 and the 4750 we're gonna grab this guy right here and let's go to configuration let's hit Get rid of auto connect and we'll go back um, and you guys should see this in that um, it's asking you to connect into that Advantech 4750 and if we just hit connect then all of a sudden it instantly connects into that unit beautiful now it's just a matter of grabbing each of the push buttons and everything that we started off with the stop the start the reset and literally grabbing this and bringing it over and putting them in a sequential order for our inputs and for our outputs. Excellent. If you want this guy to auto connect, then you can go to configuration and you can click on this auto connect and you're ready to rock. Sometimes this comes up in that the 4704 is also there as well. 
and you'll have an additional um, Advantech unit right here. Now we don't have the 4704 connected in yet. This is going to be used for analog signals. We're simply using the 4750 right now for digital I.O. So let's go back to configuration. Let's put this to zero and then we're ready to rock. Beautiful. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to decide on a, a sequential um, you know, numbering of our stop, start, reset, um, and indicator lights here. If you wanted to see the units behind here, because right now it's really dark, if you hit this eyeball right here, then it allows you to see through and see each of your um, tags as well on the other side. If we want to see our tags right now, because right now we just have the diffuse sensor being seen, we're going to hit this arrow to go back. We're going to say view, dock all tags. And that shows all of our tags here as well. In addition to that, we can also do this. We can come over and we can choose this right here. And this says actuator tags. And once we click on that, then everything comes in. And we can also have the, uh, the sensor tags as well. So by clicking on this guy, that brings in all of our sensor tags. So that provides us with everything on the one screen. Okay, let's get rid of uh, all of our tags for now. And let's go back and let's decide on um, where we want to put these guys all on our driver. And once we, once we do that, then that's going to determine the I.O. addressing for all of our PLC programs going forwards. Okay, so let's start off with the stop push. Let's put the stop push button as the second input. Let's put the e-stop as our first input. Okay, so we've got e-stop, then we've got the stop push button. Next, let's grab the start. The start will be input 0 0.2. Okay, then we've got the reset push button right here. So the reset will be input number 3. Um, and then what else do we have? We have the selector switch. Um, and the selector switch, we're just going to use one state. We're going to use this guy right here when it's a 1. Okay, we don't need to use both states there. Okay, looks good. And what else have we missed? We missed the diffuse sensor. So the diffuse sensor can be input number 5. And let's just go through and see if we've picked everything up. Diffuse sensor, we're good. Emergency stop. Factor IO pause and reset and running and time scale. We don't need to make use of those guys yet. Reset, we've already got there. Uh, we have the selector switch. We've got the start and the stop. Beautiful. So we've got all our inputs right now. On the other side, let's do all of our indicator lights. So matching with the stop, let's grab this guy right here for our first indicator. Okay, then for our start, let's do that guy as the green. Okay, looks good. Uh, next one we'll do is the reset. Okay. You know what? We're not going to have a loss of we're not you know we're not going to use all these guys up. So let's match them up so that the start is input two and the the indicator for that guy is output two. Reset is output three. Looks good. And you know what? Let's put this guy right here for the stop. So stop is input one and the output for the light corresponding to it is output one as well. Okay, it looks good. Um, and we've got each of those guys. Then we can do the stack lights as well. So we'll do red, then we'll do green, then we'll do yellow. Looks good. Um, we don't necessarily need to have like these push buttons as well. Like the push buttons come with a, an integral light switch as well. We may want to keep those out for now. Um, let's see, we need our roller conveyor as well. Um, but you know what, I'm going to do the, that one right here for in, output number 9. Um, and let's see, we need the siren to go off. And I think that's cool. So let's bring this guy up here. And then let's drop them in just in case we're going to use them. So the stop button will be output number 9, uh, the start button will be output 10, and do we have a reset button light? There we go, reset button light. 
as well. So if we want to make use of them, they're there. All right, let's see if we've got everything. The alarm siren is there. The emitter we're just going to force on. Uh, we have the indicator for green, red, and yellow. Yeah, looks good. Is that great? No, we don't have, we, I put the reset button over here. So I'll grab this guy and bring it over. Uh, we need the indicator for yellow. Okay, then we've got the stack light, red, green, and yellow again. Uh, and then down here, we've got red, green, and yellow for our push buttons. In addition to that, we've got our siren and our conveyor, and that looks like that takes care of all of the actuators on this side. Beautiful, looks good. All right, so everything's set up now, guys. We've got our scene set up in factory IO. Uh, we then went over the wiring of our, our PLC to the Advantech USB 4750 to keep track of our digital IO. We have nothing to look at analog yet. We'd have to use a, the, the alternate Advantech unit, but we'll get into that in a, in a later video. Uh, in addition to that, creating the scene, doing the wiring from the PLC to the Advantech, putting in the software for the Advantech, um, and then setting up the drivers. So we went to File and then Drivers. The last thing we did is we sequentially brought in all of our inputs and all of our outputs to get everything working. All right, guys, that's pretty good for, uh, for this video. Let's stop her there, continue on in the playlist, and the next thing we'll do is we'll set up a two-wire control.